if we want to understand why unemployment varies so much, what do we need to look at? Well, something that's going to be very important if we want to know why people don't have jobs is to try to understand you know, the determinants of uh, job creation. So we want to understand when firms want to hire workers and when they don't want to hire workers. Because of course, if firms would want to hire a lot of workers all the time, we wouldn't really have problems of unemployment. So if we want to understand unemployment, we need to look at the other side of the labor market. We need to, we need to understand what workers do, but we also need to understand what firms do. And the uh, pendant of unemployment on the firm side, that's what we call vacant jobs. So vacant jobs are jobs that firms would like to fill, but that they are not able to fill. So you see, it's very similar to unemployed workers. Unemployed workers are workers who would like to work, but cannot. Vacant jobs are the same idea on the firm side. So what happens to vacant jobs in the US? Are there many? How do they, how do they move over time? So we can look at that. So let's look at uh, vacant jobs in the US. So again, this is a graph for the US. And this is uh, what we call the vacancy rate. So what is a vacancy rate? Uh, the vacancy rate is the number of vacant jobs divided by uh, the size of the labor force. Okay? Uh, so if you see a vacancy rate of uh, 5%, it tells you that the number of vacant jobs is 5% times the size of the labor force. Okay? Um, and so um, these are vacancy rates for the US. And so you may wonder how do we measure these things? Because uh, unemployment rate, you, you know, as you must have seen in, in terminal macroeconomics, uh, unemployment rate is always measured through surveys that's administered by the government. Um, so the government is going to uh, send uh, people uh, to households to interview them. Uh, so in the US, a survey is called the Current Population Survey. So it's a survey that's conducted monthly. Government workers go to households and they ask them basic questions about their um, situation. And one question is whether you have a job or not, which allows you to count the number of employed workers. If you don't have a job and they ask you, are you have you been searching for one in the past few weeks? If yes, you're counted as an employee. If no, you're counted as a of the labor force. And through this survey, you can keep track quite accurately of the number of people who are uh, unemployed through um, the current population um, survey. But how do you measure vacant jobs? Um, that's something that seems much more challenging. And in fact, it is something that's more complicated to, uh, to measure. And here you have a big series that you can see from 1951 to 2019. But actually, how these things are measured is uh, there's a little bit of history behind it. So, in fact, you can split that into roughly. Uh, so, you have before and after uh, 2000, roughly. So, before 2000, actually, the government didn't measure really systematically vacant jobs in the US. And part of the reason is that macroeconomic theory didn't really take into, you know, historically, the concept of vacant job is not really present in macroeconomic theory. You know, if you think about a competitive labor market, if you have a labor demand, a labor supply, but you don't really have this notion of vacant jobs. The model that we're going to study this semester, the matching model, gives a big role to vacant jobs. But that matching model was developed only in the 80s and really became popular in the 90s. So that's only when government realized that it was important to measure vacant jobs. So you see, there's a clear connection between what the government does and the statistics that they collect and the type of model that you use. That's why it's important to understand models of the macroeconomy, um, to understand what governments do. Say. And in fact, there's a clear connection between the government's statistics and the theory behind. Uh, theory behind. And so, before 2000, uh, vacant jobs were mostly collected through uh, private companies. Um, so from 2000 in the US, there's a company called the Conference Board that uh, was collecting job advertisement in newspapers, mostly. Uh, and because that's how our jobs were, were advertised before, uh, through newspapers, 
ads and that the conference board would look at all newspapers in major cities and count the number of uh, job ads in these newspapers. Then would aggregate them and that would give them an idea of the number of vacant jobs in the US. So that's how it was done. Um, after 2000, the government started to measure in the US uh, the number of vacant jobs through a survey called uh, JOLTS, Job Opening and Labor Turnover Survey, that's administered by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Um, so here this series is done by, as you see, it's actually done by merging these two sources of information. Um, okay, so what do we see here in our uh, vacancy rate? So exactly as uh, for the unemployment rate, you can see that the number of vacant jobs is not zero. There are always jobs that are available but unfilled. And in fact, if you compute your average here, you get something around uh, 3% roughly. That's the average vacancy rate here. So again, something that's way above zero. And you can see that exactly as with the unemployment rate, you have um, big fluctuations in that vacancy rate. So it's quite interesting actually, the same way that the unemployment rate moves around a lot with recession. Here you see again the recessions are marked with this um, gray, this gray area. So this is exactly the same as in the previous diagram. And you can see that um, during the business cycle in expansion and recession, you have big fluctuations in the vacancy rate. So what happens? Uh, so you can see, so we can look for instance at the Great Recession. At the boom in the 2007, 2008, at the peak of the boom, the vacancy rate was very high. There were lots of vacant jobs. And then as you enter the recession, the vacancy rate is collapsing. And you can see that at the end of the recession, there are very few uh, vacant jobs. Basically, firms stop advertising new jobs in recession, which is not very surprising. During a recession, you're a firm, you cannot sell your products, you're having a hard time getting your financing for new projects, there's very low demand for whatever you do, you're going to stop posting new jobs. And so you can see it here. So at the end of the, re of the great recession, for instance, the, the job vacancy rate was below 2% here. Um, and that's true after every recession. So you can go after the dot-com bubble here. You have very very low vacancy rates. So there are very few jobs that are advertised. And you can see here in the 90s, you can see here in the 80s, you can see it here in the 70s. Uh, so it's exactly the opposite as for the unemployment rate. The unemployment rate is always very high in recession, low in expansion. So it's called counter-cyclical. The vacancy rate is very high in expansion and very low in recession. So this is what we call um, pro-cyclical. Pro-cyclical because um, it moves with the business cycle. So it moves at the, at the same time as the business cycle. So when you have a boom, you have a very high value of the vacancy rate. When you have a recession, you have a very low value of the vacancy rate. Uh,